Welcome to today's live stream. Today we're going to be doing CAS Plus PBQ number three. This one's on disaster recovery and business continuity. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Okay, so this is going to be CAS Plus PBQ number three. We're going to approach this just like we normally do. I'm going to start by reading this scenario. Your disaster recovery specialist working for a local university. The IT services team you lead just finished writing an updated business continuity and disaster recovery plan. The university has a variety of goals with stakes in research, education, and healthcare. The BCDR plan addresses the steps required to resume normal business operations, which systems and departments are mission critical, and the responsibilities of leaders and personnel in various disaster scenarios. BCDR plan addresses several disaster scenarios ranging from IT decentric DDoS attacks to physical disasters resulting in destroyed servers and disks or lost work areas. Defines recovery tasks and subtasks, the personnel responsible, prioritizes the task by department and function. The BCDR plan includes a timeline for tasks to be accomplished. It also lists critical vendors, contact information, specific types, and quantities of resources required to achieve partial and complete recovery. Pretty straightforward. Next step is testing the procedures laid out in the BCDR plan. Your task is a plan test for your team's BCDR plan and determine the scope and nature of the test. You also write up detailed a detailed fictional scenario for use in these tests. The scenario consists of multiple disruptions. Okay, now this is gonna be important. In this scenario, a fire breaks out in the server room in the administrative building, comprising of over 80% of student account data. The incident occurs during a wave of influenza, and 30% of staff members are at home sick. The fire has also affected about 10% of the servers containing patient medical data in the nearby health services administration building. Okay. So this tells us a couple of things. This tells us that PII is affected because it's student information. Uh, it tells us that we have HIPAA or PHI, protected health information here too. All right, so that's interesting. I don't know if these percentages are gonna be important. Some key points in the BCDR plan. At least two heads of department to call a disaster. At least two heads of department to call a disaster. Okay, that's not an incomplete sentence. A single warm site is available that can be quickly converted for use. Okay, we got a warm site map of meeting points for employees, including routes. I'm going to assume that that means that the plan includes these, even though it doesn't say that. It just, these are incomplete sentences here. Vendor contact information, communication plans, who is responsible for, and whom, for informing whom. Okay, so now we're using incomplete. Okay. We're trying to use proper grammar, but we're not writing a whole sentence. Alternative process flows for failures in primary processes. Easy access checklist for what to do and what not to do. Which systems recover in what order and how to do so. The scope of the testing, non-recoverable systems or irretrievable data loss. What the heck does that mean? Missing dependencies, software errors or missing recovery time objectives. Lack of familiarity and comfort with disaster recovery processes on part of the employee, staff, or department leaders. So this is what we're trying to test for? That doesn't, that doesn't make sense, really. Okay, let's just see what the drop-downs are. This is a lot. This is looking like one of those, those logic puzzle type questions. All right, let's see. Scope, you gather relevant staff for a role play style tabletop exercise based on the scenario. Okay, gather. Okay. All right, this this doesn't really have anything to do with the scenario. If we're going to be exercising a disaster recovery plan or a business continuity plan, however you want to call it, then you want to gather people from each department, not just the executive staff and not just the IT staff. So, And you would want to include vendors if you can, and you'd want to include leadership. So that seems pretty straightforward. Okay, pre-emergency mitigation. You ask the BCDR team what can be changed to prevent an event such as the one such as that described in the scenario. Despite a secure solution being in place, cloud database storage for PII is suggested. Based on liability best practices, should you take the suggestion? Okay. Does it say anything about cloud storage here? I don't think so. I don't remember anything about cloud storage. I mean, I think what it's going to be driving at here is that cloud-based solutions 
have some risk associated with them, but this is where we have to make a lot of assumptions here. So what, explain your reasoning. Yeah, cloud storage is always safer. The university is ultimately responsible, not the cloud service provider. Third party management is easier. Okay, I don't really see any clues for what indicates this question. So I'm gonna assume that they're gonna, they're trying to drive at the fact that if we store PII in the cloud, there is a risk associated with that. Now, cloud storage on its own isn't inherently more risky. Uh, I mean, this could be a private cloud, but wait, this says cloud database storage for PII. So that could mean that could be a private cloud. Okay. I'm not a big fan of this question already. <laughs> All right, let's say, I'm gonna say, you know, it, I think this is what they're trying to drive at. The university is ultimately responsible, not the CSP. You almost have to metagame these questions. You have to think about what they're trying to get at with the questions. And I think that's what we're trying to do here. Pre-emergency preparedness. Your question, you question the BCDR team regarding what can be done to prepare for an event such as in the scenario. Okay, so, all staff know their roles and responsibility, campus-wide drills, study emergency map routes to meeting places, regular database backups. Does that mean, okay, this, I mean, this doesn't make sense from, doesn't make sense, but I think we can make a guess at what the question's trying to ask, which is, is this, do we want to include these things in the BCDR plan? Uh, and do we want to include the staff? Do we want to prepare the staff for these things? I mean, this doesn't, all staff know their roles and responsibilities in campus-wide drills. These are just the, this, uh, the tense of that is, is very different. I mean, I think what this is, this question is basically asking is what are key points of a BCDR plan? I guess we're testing for lack of familiarity with, okay, so I, all of these are good things to have in a BCDR plan. We would wanna include testing, we wanna have uh, regular backups, we wanna have, we wanna make sure that all staff know their roles and responsibilities, and we wanna make sure that staff study emergency maps and routes to meeting places, but that's not really what's talked about here. All right, select two sets of guidelines in any order that are relevant to being prepared for this scenario. So these are gonna be the same. All right, so, okay, well, Graham Leach Bliley, that deals with financial information, it has nothing to do with this. GDPR, possibly uh, due to PII, it doesn't say where the university is. It's definitely HIPAA, because we, we, it mentions health information. It's like HIPAA and GDPR. That should be the same. <laughs> Am I crazy? It says select two sets of guidelines in any order that are relevant. Why would it say in any order if they're different? I mean, am I, am I wrong here? <laughs> okay. All right, so <laughs> if, <laughs> all right. Well, NIST 800-SP 800-88 is media sanitization. Um, and then 800-122, that's pretty simple. That's uh, disaster recovery, business continuity. All right, so that's good. So it's gonna be HIPAA. I mean, it could be GDPR too, but I think it's HIPAA specifically because it says here that we affected the medical data in the nearby health services. So we definitely wanna have HIPAA. This one's silly. Okay, unless I'm missing something. All right, you asked the BCDR team how they would respond to the event. Identify what you, as the facilitator of the tabletop exercise, are looking for in the team's responses. All right, so what, what feedback do we want from the team? That's a little clearer. This one makes a little more sense. Multiple solution paths in past, practicable plan steps. Got it. Okay, so steps that don't work is an awkward way of saying that, and staff feedback. But we definitely want feedback. Uh, we definitely want multiple ways to we want their feedback on ways to solve this yeah jamar i agree man this is a weird pdq this is a I, I pity the people who get this one uh impracticable plan steps 
I mean, yeah, I guess that stuff that doesn't work. That's really what that should say. <laughs> stuff that doesn't work, stuff that does work, and feedback. Got it. So all of that should be checked, I think. Post-emergency recovery. You asked the BCDR team what action should be taken to recover after the event. As a facilitator of the tabletop exercise, clarify what you're looking for in staff responses to the recovery phase of the tabletop exercise. Okay, emotional preparedness, general IT knowledge, or knowledge of recovery steps. I mean, this I think has the most relevance. It says, it directly says here, what you're looking for for IT staff responses in the recovery phase of the tabletop exercise staff knowledge of recovery steps i think that one's pretty simple I th this one has nothing to do with this scenario the only thing we read this whole thing we read a whole novelette uh, novella of this scenario the only thing that was relevant was the fact that there is patient information here that was it we do have vendor contact information that is relevant in the first part uh this is a weird one. All right, let's try it. Okay, all right, so this this is one of these that looks really tough, but that wasn't that hard. But again, it, it wasted a lot of time. So this is a really time-consuming one that you kind of have to think through. Kind of interested to see what their rationale for this is. Okay, we know that, yeah, it should, a tabletop exercise should include IT staff and vendors and leadership. I want to see what they're talking about with PII. We know, okay, so to explain this reasoning for the second and third sections, even though you store PII or PHI with a cloud service provider, or provider CSP, a cloud service provider, the responsibility for what happens to that data ultimately responds, uh, is, in, is the uh, liability for that falls on the data owner, which would be the university. So even if the CSP messes up and leaks that data somehow, the university is still liable, which is the inherent risk of using cloud storage. Now, it doesn't say in the third section that we're using a third-party cloud storage provider. You can use a private cloud here. It just says cloud storage. But we, we got to make an assumption, I guess, I guess for this second section. And because if you're using a private cloud, then you control all the all of the... Uh, you know, you control the servers and all the infrastructure. Okay. So it assumes that we're using a third-party cloud service provider. Okay, yeah. Best practice for sensitive or confidential data would be manage that data in a private cloud, preferably on-premise. Creating more work for security and IT teams. Okay. I mean, it. so this would still be a valid recommendation. And it even acknowledges that private cloud is an option. We don't have to have the private cloud co-located with all the other equipment. Okay, anyway. It, we guessed that one correctly. But this one could really confuse a lot of people. And then let's see. Before beginning, this, beginning the simulation portion of the exercise, BCDR testing facilitator should use questions to gauge staff preparedness. Yeah. Okay. So we'll use questions. You question the team. I mean, these these answers could really be worded better. You know, we question the team. I guess on these topics, but this is really confusing how it's worded. And then, yeah, this is pretty self. This is pretty simple, even though it's worded strangely. And that's really a lot of the tripping points with these questions: how strangely they're worded, like impracticable plan steps. Things not to do. <laughs> Things that won't work. That is a better way of saying that. So kind of, you have to really translate this. I really feel, I sympathize with test takers who have English as their second language, trying to, trying to translate and trying to figure out what these questions are asking because this is difficult. This is difficult for anybody. But I think we, I mean, we got it done. And this is a tough one. If you get a question like this one, you really have to stay calm and just work through what you know. 
because you know it's easy to panic here but remember each one of these little ticks is a different point okay so if you don't get one of these sections exactly correct you got other sections ready so uh, that's yeah that's about it with this one so I hope that was helpful and you know if you're looking for cast plus training check out the links in the description I have cast plus courses you can work with directly the PBQs we have here and the official CompTIA Learn Labs environment. And I also have instructor-led boot camps. We have classes every month. We've got a class coming up uh, in about 30 days now. In May, if you're looking for a live class with 40 hours of instruction, a first-time pass guarantee. But I appreciate you guys. 